Hey, Steve Bignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts. It's hard to overestimate the importance of the Ford Mustang. I mean, it launched the pony car craze. It wasn't called a pony car because of the Barracuda or the Camaro. Those aren't horses. The Mustang is a horse. So the pony car grew out of the Ford Mustang's horse origins, if you will. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people remember these as the sleek 2 plus 2 fastback of the convertible. But the reality is, this is a 1966. And of the 607,568 Mustangs built in 1966, 499,751 were sedans like this. It's true. The two plus twos might have gotten the ink, the convertibles, but the vast majority were sedans like this one. And the reason for it is, well, practicality. People who bought Mustangs tended to be younger people, uh, people with small families or maybe newlyweds with no families, but they still needed passenger and cargo capacity. Now, here's the thing. On the sedan and the convertible, the deck lid is big, it's full, there's plenty of room here to put stuff into, whereas on the 2 plus 2 fastback, the deck lid was shortened up about this long, it was much smaller because the back window and the fastback ate up half the distance and half the space that would have been used for the, uh, the trunk lid. So again, if you had a 2 plus 2, you had a much smaller trunk, which was not such a good thing. Now there's a pass-through, you could use it as a station wagon, but the narrow opening was kind of a problematic thing. They used to say you can get as much luggage as you can pour in through the slot, whereas these have a much larger, almost galaxy-sized uh, trunk compartment. Okay, maybe not galaxy-sized, but, but again, the roofs on these were pretty stylish, kind of influenced by the Thunderbird in a way, but again, the Mustang was its own creature. Another thing, too, is on these sedans inside, the rear seat is full width. You can get three people across back there. This is truly a five-passenger car, or six with the optional front bench. But with that said, the convertibles and the two plus twos had a much thicker area right here, and the back seat cushion was unique to convertible or two plus two, strictly for two people. They didn't call the two plus two fastback a two plus two because it seated five people. It's at two and two. So that's another reason why people with families or people who needed to have more room inside the car and in the trunk wouldn't select a 2 plus 2. So again, the vast majority of 66 Mustangs were sedans like this. Now we also have to remember the Mustang's humble origins. We, you know, we can think about the Shelby Mustang GT350, and these stripes, by the way, are not factory stuff. Somebody said, hey, I like those Shelby Mustangs. I'll spray this on myself. This is not a Shelby Mustang of any kind. And it's also, well, it tells us the, the Mustang took its roots from the Ford Falcon. Right here, there's those nine inch drum brakes with the four lugs that were used on Falcons. There it is. And when you had a six cylinder Mustang, that's the brake package and suspension package. You've got lighter springs. Uh, everything about this was lighter weight than a V8 Mustang. And uh, under the hood, of course, you know, I love Fords as much as anything else. Well, I am a Mopar guy, but with that said, here are those, I won't say cursed, but the spring towers inside the engine bay right here. Now, Holman and Moody in 1965 built a small fleet of 427 camera-powered Mustang AFX cars. They had to eliminate these spring towers to get that camera in there. They actually used a flat twist leaf suspension. Very weird, cool cars for FX racing only, drag racing. But again, these spring towers, anybody who has a Ford hot rod will know, uh, trying to mount headers or change the plugs, they're not so much fun. Better be left alone. Now this one here, we know that because of the four lug wheels, it's a six popper. Uh, and one thing, too, about Mustangs is that the door, the driver's door, contains the DNA of the car, or at least it did. Here, right here, we can see the door tag, which contains everything you want to know about the car has been removed from this door. So that's the problem. If you have a, a fender bender or a door bender and you lose your driver's side door to ever replace, say, in 1968 or 9, you lose your car's DNA. Kind of a problem. But with that said, there is a secondary VIN. Uh, less information, but it's still useful. Right here, stamped in. Sometimes on both sides. I've even seen these double dyed, like two of them right there. But that one reads uh, 6, 1966, T, Metuchen, New Jersey, 07, two door sedan body, T, 200 cubic inch, six banger. Now in 1964 and a half, you could actually get the U code 170 cubic inch, six popper. And that further uh, validates the fact that uh, Falcon and Mustang are very, very close cousins under the skin. Uh, now this door here does have the door tag, as they, as they say it, the warranty tag right here in place. Now this one here is a C code. So this is from a V8, a different car altogether. But that V8 could be had for 105 bucks extra over the six popper. And uh, that got you five lug wheels, heavier 
suspension and more. Now this one here, I got to say that, you know, back in 2017, I wrote a book here, 1001 Muscle Car or Mustang Facts. My second book, I did muscle cars, Mustangs, and then Corvettes. And this book is packed with data on uh, Ford Mustangs of all generations, right on up to the, uh, the more recent ones. And uh, this is out of print, but if you want a copy, you don't call CarTech Books, it's out of print, but you can find them on Amazon and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about Mustangs. That book took nine months to make. It was like having a baby, I swear. The only thing was, about a month in, I was up to fact number 400 and my computer crashed. I lost all that data. I had to write the book twice. It wasn't any fun. But anyway, they're out there if you want one. Now inside this, of course, we see the remains of the bucket seats and ooh, what do we have here? Old cassettes. Remember cassette tapes? Here's Journey Escape with uh, Lay It Down, Dead or Alive, Open Arms. Great stuff. And in fact, right here we see uh, Don't Stop Believing. Who's Crying Now? Great songs. I saw a Journey concert at the Worcester Centrum in 1984, and I swear it was the loudest concert I've ever been to. My ears rang for a week, and I've seen you 2 the Butthole Surfers, all kinds of bands, and Journey, of all things, was the loudest show I've ever seen. My ears are still ringing, in fact. One thing that my ears don't ring from is this. This is Happy Louie. This is a, nor a Northeast specialty. Happy Louie was, I think, a, a, a Springfield-based uh, polka musician and his band would play around and wear masks and play like that. This is a Happy Louie cassette right here from back in the day. We make our way further back. One thing that we love about all Mustangs of this 1966 was this little cove in the side, which was not unique to the 2 plus 2 or the convertible. It was on all of them, so that really helped to identify. And this hip right here, just a beautiful styling touch right there. And they made so much out of such a basic package. Again, the Ford Falcon, a beautiful car, good car, but not very sexy. But the Mustang skin made the Falcon Mustang a rock star. Now, one thing also we got to point out here is the rear axle. We mentioned the four lug hubs and wheels. Well, this one here has the basic, we'll trade places, Shane, maybe if you're coming from that side. Uh, most people think of the Ford 9-inch or the Ford 8-inch. Well, this is the Ford Salisbury type 6.75. Now this Salisbury six and three quarter inch axle was strictly six cylinder. The 289 two barrel and four barrel would have had a nine, an eight inch rear axle of a Hotchkiss type. The 271 horsepower 289 K code also seen in Shelby GT50s, was the only Mustang with the 9-inch full-sized Ford rear axle. Pretty rare stuff. But again, this is another hint that the Falcon and the Mustang share their basic bones. So let's go back up to the top and, uh, you know, basically give the last rights to this 1966 Rustang. Now, when I say Rustang, that's actually unfair. Any car you name it, left in New England for its whole life is going to start to rust away. And Rustangs aren't necessarily rusty. In fact, you find one of these things from Arizona or Texas, it can be absolutely crisp and rust free. In fact, that's what I'd recommend you do if you're trying to find a restorable car shop from a rust free state. Meanwhile, this is probably good for parts or for just looking at here in the Boneyard, which is more than a junkyard, it's actually a museum. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and come back tomorrow for more Junkyard Crawl.